Beholders, sit down, class, and let your main man show you how it's done. Now, the Beholder first appeared in Dungeons & Dragons, possibly the most quintessential of Dungeons & Dragons monsters first appearing in Greyhawk in 1975 and has subsequently been part of every edition of first of second of third of fourth of fifth the beholder will likely always be part of dungeons and dragons a very interesting monster that can be used in many ways we see beholders placed prominently in forgotten realms in Spelljammer, in other settings and uh, particularly there in uh, Forgotten Realms, you see him in Zeno keep organizing, manipulating the machinations of these lawful evil eye tyrants of uh, these xenophobic manipulators who ply their powers upon others. And you can see them fitting wonderfully into a tyrannical structure like that where they vie and attempt to gain supremacy. That's right, class. When we examine them, they can prepare your campaign, your saga, as a wonderful apex villains the bad guy that's behind 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 the bad guy that you start off with and you're running hot or you can pop the beholder right in the very first session where they see him floating off in the mist swept uh, of a rainy sea coast city and they see that beholder floating about two and a half foot off the ground with a mist trailing uh, along about 5 a.m in the morning Seagulls caw in the background, you smell the salty air, and that beholder moving there as you spy him out, you're in the window, or perhaps you're down another alleyway, maybe the beholder doesn't see you, doesn't notice you, doesn't care. Maybe it does, and maybe that leads to a spiraling of events that unfold, that create epic, wondrous proportions. Now there's many, many, many different types of beholders, permutations, mutations, and beholders don't like other beholders, particularly those that are different them from them. The more different a beholder is from them, the more imperfect it is. The more they are infuriated. But even the slightest, the tiniest of deviations can inflame the utter xenophobic beholder and keep that mindset in place. And beholders have a tremendous power. They could disintegrate you. And that is an awesome power. They could take that 12th, 15th level character out like that. Out like a, like a light. Say versus death or die. That's the sort of power beholders have. Now, they could also turn you to stone and, and use those sort of powers to sculpt out layers for themselves in subterranean environments. But a whole beholder could just as easily be in an urban environment, living in, in, in a, 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 like a basement sort of catacomb in a thieves guild. You could have them in mountain passes. You could have them in ancient forest or decrepit ruins. There's so many different places you can have them and with so many, many, many underlings. And you can even have those humanoid forms. There's prestige classes and so forth where you could play an ocular adapt or something of that nature with eyes in you and you pull like a faith no more video as you want it out. But you can't have it. Once the beholder infest your flesh, oh, the possibilities are endless. That's right, class. You want to examine the nature of hate. The Beholder is a curmudgeon and utter and ultimate hater, much like my man Nugulus. And the Beholder, it doesn't care about you. It only cares about itself. And that's really the sort of nature of evil of a thing. It's orderly. Its mind is precise and uh, a pristine environment for brewing diabolical schemes that can that can uh, run an entire city, an entire region, an entire kingdom, an entire coast, an entire world. The Beholder wants that power. And imagine that mad, maniacal world plotter that can disintegrate you, that can turn you to stone, that has legions of followers, and has tremendous physical power, and hates its followers, and hates you, and wants to only have its own goals achieved. Because it thinks it is the best. It thinks it deserves everything. And when you get into that sort of mindset, it can create a tremendous uh, villain here for a campaign. Or you could have three beholders, each working and plying and politicking against each other. Perhaps at different times, different beholders show patronage to the player characters, helping them, working in their schemes, using them as diabolically as pawns in their wicked games against one another. So it creates so many different uh, possibilities. And then you have your gas spores and your small little pseudo eyes and your different uh, diminutive aspects of Beholder, your taunts. And you can, after painting that first seed or that sea swept 
back alley with the seagulls cawing and a dead cat laying there rotting and the mist rolling down uh, the cobblestone street where the cracks are filled with rainwater and they see that beholder roll by. Then later they see a large gas board down in a, down in a dim light in a, in a cavern, in a tunnel, in a dungeon. And it triggers that panic. And they gain little glimpses and flashes of bits and pieces from research, from information. And you slowly string them along. You slowly teach them, slowly allow them to learn about this Beholder, about the things that they've seen, about the plots that have been hatched against them. Now, Beholders also have the possibility of magic. Yes, that's right. Not only can they disintegrate you, not only can they turn you to stone, but some of them are wizards. And some of them will hate all those that are wizards. Some of them pluck their very own eye out like Odin and gain powers from another world. Some of them have psionic abilities beyond those typically associated with beholders. Beholders can have classes. They're beholders with all sorts of skills to be put upon themselves because beholders are perfectionist and perfectionists like to grow in power, they like to groom themselves in possibly unique fashions and then hold that own uniqueness against others. I have achieved, you have not. I am better, you are not. That's the sort of mindset that you could bring into place in a bear with a beholder. You feel what I'm saying, class? I think that you do. And I think that when you get to the idea of beholders, you uh, can really scare the hell out of players with these aberrations. Beholders even featured, uh, featured an episode of Futurama. If you guys remember that show, uh, if you remember that episode, the, uh, the, the, the eye tyrants are really useful in a lot of different ways because they can work with others they can work with those outside of their species but the others need to be very powerful and there's that tremendous capacity to double cross or triple cross and when you're in the middle of a thing and you've got a group of villains against you and all of a sudden there's a double cross from the inside that you don't see and those ramifications spill out and the players see this and that this and that and you have someone like a fazal chambrel comes to you and, 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 and you form a hot tag team with, with a minion of Bane against some Beholder action. Or you start working with some kind of Naga. Uh, you never know what sort of uh, possibilities you're going to have for perhaps villains that the Beholder has himself worked against. Infuriated. Pawns of the Beholder. A, a scorned Beholder adept with the eyes all over his flesh. That could really provide some wonderful, excellent aspects to a game beholders are not the sort of monster you just want to have up and get slaughtered like that not that i would advocate that for really very many monsters at all but with a beholder you want to you want to you want to taunt them you want to show them and not show them you want to move you want to have the in, in hideous undulations of the dark shadows and the, the 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 what is going on and allow the players to question to wonder why what and who pulls the strings or perhaps to have seen the beholder and you can cast that beholder into see just like i've said and then make them think that beholder with learning things is behind X, Y, and Z that's going on when it has nothing to do with those things at all. And you could run it as that old red herring, which is another great way that you could grab that and, and run it off. You, you want to get a maximum amount of value. You want to have players sell to reel in fear from the floating orb with the many eyes. Uh, Beholder is a, a, true, a truly monstrous beast in being. And I definitely suggest if you've never used one that you give a beholder a shot to be part of one of your campaigns. A very interesting monster. It can be used in a lot of different ways. I uh, definitely look forward to hearing. In the comments below, your comments, your thoughts on the beholders. Hit the like button. Subscribe to your main man. Hear about your Dungeons and Dragons, your Pathfinder. Hear about your Within the Ring of Fire. Get your Within the Ring of Fire books now. Drive through RPG. Join Raw Immersive Games Facebook page. Chat about Within the Ring of Fire. Deep Immersive Dark Fantasy. You like your Dungeons and Dragons. You'll love your Within the Ring of Fire. Uh, so until next time, class dismissed.